Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here, Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan, helping you find your second camper the first time around. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the two most popular members of the Keystone fifth wheel family. That will be the Cougar and the Montana series. Specifically, we'll be looking at not the Cougar half ton series, but rather what I call the big cat, the full Cougar. And we're going to be comparing that to, I guess what you call its big sister, the Montana High Country series. Not the full luxury Montana, but the High Country. Now, if you're curious about the difference between those two things, let me know. I'll shoot you a link. I've already done a video showing you the differences when you go from a High Country to a full Montana. And really, that's a lot of what we're going to be doing here again today. Because that's kind of the trick. They're a lot more alike than they're dissimilar. So one of the first things I like to do when I dive into these comparisons is I say, okay, let me pick a floor plan that they both build that is roughly similar. So if we look at something like the Cougar 316 RLS, which is by happenstance, the one that I'm pointing at here in the background, versus something like a Montana High Country 330 RL. What you're going to see when you look at roughly equivalent floor plans like that, when you go from the Cougar to the High Country, you're going to gain about five to seven thousand dollars so the question then becomes what do you get for that but the thing is you should never feel like you're settling on the cougar because it hits all the major points very nicely and what i want to do is i want to begin by kind of establishing some baseline cougar facts and then show you a couple little areas where the cougar actually does have potentially an edge in enhancement and then what we're going to do is look to see where the high country takes it a step beyond from there because the thing is, in terms of spirit and practice, these two things are relatively interchangeable. They are both in the kind of size class category where they are perfectly suited to park life. They both carry the exact same one plus three year warranty that includes allowances for full time RVing. And they're both perfectly portable. So if you wanna stay in one place, if you wanna move, if you wanna do both, both of these brands could work very well for you, and that's something that trips people up. They sometimes look at similar floor plans and go, what is the difference in these? And the question I usually get is, is the high country worth the extra money? And people aren't sure what makes that extra money difference. That's what we're gonna hit on here today. Now along the way, if you appreciate the footage, leave us a little comment, let us know. Let me know uh, like as you go through your own personal little tally sheet, do you think it is worth going up to the high country versus the Montana. And have I missed anything? Did I get anything wrong? And as always, if you appreciate the effort, because these comparison videos I put together, holy cow, folks, this takes like three times more time than the normal multiple hours it takes for normal RV tour videos. So if you appreciate what we're doing, please hit that subscribe button, give us some comments, follow along, and I'll keep putting them out as long as you keep wanting them. So a quick little statistical interesting fact, Montana and Cougar, in that order, are the two most popular fifth wheels in the history of RVing. There is no one who has been setting market trends, uh, you know, pushing the envelope like they have for, for as long as they have. And uh, it's because of that. I don't really think you'd be disappointed with either of these. I think that each is just kind of fine-tuned to a little bit different buyer. And in case you're curious, Number three most popular fifth wheel in history, the Jayco Eagle. I guess we just really know how to pick them here at Haylitz. So what are the baseline similarity factors here? They both feature a one plus three year warranty. So you've got a full year RV warranty, which cool thing with Keystone, it is automatically fully transferable to something like a second owner within the warranty period. That is not normal in the RV business. They also have easily, I think, the most comprehensive three-year structural coverage out there. They're both going to have some really nice ride and handling features, such as the uh, road armor pin box and matching suspension system. And one of the reasons this works is if you notice, there's actually a shock dampener above and below the shackle, which really takes a lot of that jitter out of your uh, towing experience to give you less stress on your vehicle and all the fasteners in the RV. And the method in which they're both assembled is nearly identical. They use almost exactly the same materials, the same processes in the same places. There's only two ways structurally that they're going to vary. Um, one is a little bit different chassis. We'll talk about when we get to the high country. The other one is the flooring. I'll, I'll hit that up in just a minute. 
and they even have the same safety features on them. They both uh, side and rear camera prepped. They both have reverse travel lighting on these taillights and they both have that 3,000 pound rated towing hitch down there with safety chain hooks and a four-way wiring harness. This feature though will vary a little bit by specific floor plans. If it is a toy hauler model or something like that front living with the loft Montana high country that has a drop frame uh, rear bedroom, they sit too low, those models will not have a hitch. But again, that has more to do with a floor plan than the brand. They are both hot and cold camp tested. They both have 12 volt tank heaters, radiant barriers, and awesome insulation package on them. So whether you're going to be camping where it's chilly, where it's hot, something in between, or a little bit of both, you're gonna be covered. And both of these little Keystone Cuties have very similar solar setups. They're both side solar ready with standard roof solar prep and they have some factory solar options. Those will vary a little bit. We'll hit on those a little bit more when we get up to the High Country series. And at this point, you're probably going, dude, I get it. They're similar enough. Okay, show me where they're different. I agree. Let's get started. Um, one little area where they vary is actually their stable steps. They both have more ride, quick, easy adjust, four plank stable steps. But on the Cougar, what you're going to see is something slightly different. What you're going to see here is they actually have these little pins that you can remove. If you want to take the steps completely off the camper, you can. That is very handy when you're at a storage facility and you don't have room to put the steps down. Or if you're going to do something like seasonal camping and you want to build a deck next to your RV and you don't want the steps in the way. Now, as we step inside, I want to give you a look around just to help establish, once again, just a baseline and concept of what the Cougar looks like. Because sometimes when two things are very similar, it often just boils down to which one just looks better to me. And again, to establish some similarities, like both Cougar and High Country are carpetless. Uh, they are both going to use Coleman quieter uh, cooling air conditioners. Now the TV of this RV has been removed, but actually they're both going to include a television. Nice big 5120 uh, BTU uh, electric space heating fireplace. Solid counters uh, with thermal foil elsewhere once you leave the kitchen. That's pretty normal in uh, a lot of nice fifth wheels like that. Uh, they're both very good about counter space, about easy reach outlets, a stainless sink. Um, big microwaves where they can. That will be one of the variances. Cougar does a big microwave where they can, and High Country pretty much does it everywhere. And then, again, another similarity up here. They're both using that rain-sensoring big XL Max Air vent fan up here. So, uh, where are they going to be different? And one of the main areas where they can potentially be a little bit different, but sometimes the same, is the refrigerator. What we are looking at here on a Cougar is the uh, standard four-door, uh, two-way RV fridge. This exact same fridge is available on a Montana High Country. On a Cougar, you have the ability to option a, uh, I believe it's 16.7, but between 16 to 17 cubic foot uh, residential refrigerator. On a Montana High Country, when you get the residential refrigerator, First of all, the model number changes. It becomes like instead of a 330, it'll become a 331. That's the only difference between all those Montanas, by the way. Keystone does that in a lot of their lines, not just Montana. But it will be a roughly 18 cubic foot residential fridge. So uh, their refrigerators are potentially the same, potentially different. It just depends. One of the areas here, interestingly, where Cougar actually does, arguably, snipe high country is the electronic system. Cougar uses, uh, on all models, the in-command uh, electronics panel. And I always forget, you got to actually touch the buttons on this one. Let's see, it's usually by default, we code them to, oops, I, I'm looking through the viewfinder, a little tricky, four zero. So if you look at this, you can control your heating and cooling, lights, slides, awnings. There's a few other things you can often do with this, like you see your tank uh, capacities and all those things. So this is kind of acting like our systems monitor. Um, it's in a sense our thermostat. That's what these little black things up there are. That's a thermal probe. And a lot of people ask me the question, why does Cougar get this? But in Montana, you don't see in command again until you go all the way up to a legacy Big Monty. And that's a great question. It makes a lot of sense. People ask, you know, why does the little brother get it, but big brother doesn't? Shouldn't they just keep adding features and not subtracting as you go up the line? And I understand that, but I think it also has to do a little bit with how each RV, Cougar and High Country, 
are slightly and specifically individually tuned for their own target demographic and buyers. What I mean by that, people like me tend to be more of a cougar buyer. I'm very familiar with tech. I'm used to those sorts of things. Bluetooth, touch screens, buttons, they don't bother me. Montanas of all varieties, high countries or full Montes, they tend to appeal a little bit more to people like my parents. Now, it is absolutely not to say this is a hard line across the board stereotype. There are plenty of people far older than me who are far better with technology than me. It's a matter of general familiarity and interest. It's not that my parents can't operate in command. They have it on their full luxury uh, legacy Montana, actually. But I had to set it up for them. <laughs> and they, they don't use it. They have no interest in using it. They don't want to use it. They don't want to wait for that touch screen to turn on. They want to walk over, go clack. I want to click that button and be done with it. They don't want to have to pull their phone out of their pocket to do stuff. They just want a button. It's what they've had their whole lives. It's what they're used to. It's what they're expecting. And this is camping, man. You know, we're, we're not looking for annoyances. We're not looking for frustration. We're not looking for all that. We're looking for R&R. &R. We're looking to chill out. We're looking to just relax. So that's why Cougar has in command and uh, High Country and Full Montana does not until you go to the Legacy Package. It's not a feature that is generally in line with that specific target buyer. Now that being said, I do believe the more time goes on, the more that that will change, and I absolutely wouldn't be surprised if in a couple years, you do see in command expand out into uh, the Montana line more readily. But right now, that's the case. And I'll try to update this footage when some major shifts happen. You will generally see some very similar hardware between the two of them. Uh, like, we're in the Cougar bathroom still. One thing I want to point out is this actually has a two-piece shower enclosure here. Still has that easy step-in. Still has a corner uh, seat. We have that porcelain stool. But you're going to pick up a couple variances as we go up to the high country. One of which will actually be that bathroom fan right there. The bedroom will also be another one of those areas of high similarity between the two of them. They're both generally going to be six and a half foot tall when you walk around. Uh, they will both always have a standard queen bed. Most members of most uh, of both families will have the ability to option in a 70 by 80 king like we're looking at here. Both Cougar and High Country each have a couple very specific floor plans in which that is not capable. Now... Most of the time on a Cougar, you are prepped for a combo washer-dryer. Very rarely will you encounter a floor plan where that is not the case. We'll talk about the washer-dryer situation, how it differs on a high country when we hop over there so you can see it more easily. Now, I mentioned that they do very little bit on their floor construction. Interestingly, Big Cat Cougar actually has a floor construction more similar to that of a full Monty Big Montana. It is a uh, aluminum studded floor with a 5 8 thick decking. It is actually, it is an OSB style decking. It is a material though called Dynaspan, which comes in 25 foot sheets. So what that means is that basically, that's essentially a seamless floor. Dynaspan's awesome. I know, like I talk a lot about plywood on my Jayco stuff here, guys, but Dynaspan actually has 50% more load capacity versus plywood, 50%. That's no small thing right there. And having no seams means no little areas to squeak, fewer failure points. It's a, it's a really good system. All right, so that's all well and good. And now we finally really established that baseline and shown you the couple little areas where the Cougar does actually shine through a little bit. So what is it on the high country? What are you getting for those extra dollars? And the short answer is a surprising number of really big hitter features that I think will clearly define which side of this line you really want to be on. And one of those major points here, starting again with the Cougar, is the way that Cougar has a straight beam chassis and a standard outside storage compartment. And don't get me wrong, it's not like that is small by any stretch of the imagination. But when we jump over to the high country Montana, we get a massive basement space. And that is due to the fact 
that unlike a Cougar, which has a straight frame, a Montana High Country has a drop frame. You see where there's a second frame rail that actually drops down here. That allows them to get this much, much larger cargo space. And if it helps you form a reference, take a look at the difference in the size of the baggage door right here when you go from the Cougar to the High Country. Now again, this can vary a little bit by floor plan, but this is the general pass-through compartment that you find on both brands. Generally speaking, High Country has bigger outside storage. And their entry steps are a little different as well. They're both Moride quick and easy adjust stable steps, but whereas the Cougars are removable with that little pin, the Montana High Country has what I call the zero G system, where if I let go of this, it just stays put. It doesn't fall down on me. It's not gravity fed in a way. Where that is really nice is again, maybe somebody like my parents who've been around a little bit longer. Maybe they got a bad shoulder or something like that. They don't want to worry about this thing falling down on their grandkid crushing a dog or anything like that. It's not that this is exactly better than what Cougar's doing, it's just that it's different. And again, that's how they're both fine-tuned a little bit for their own kind of micro-variance market fluctuations. Ooh, that sounded like big highfalutin kind of whatever. <laughs> now the suspension between them at a glance looks the same. But when you go to a high country, you do actually start to pick up some things like some wet bolt fasteners here. Uh, the idea being, uh, you know, for longer ownership, you have the ability to do some more greasing to keep this stuff uh, running a little more easily. Whereas the Cougar system requires a little bit more, you know, disassembly to get things re-lubricated, the high country makes it a little easier. Another point of variance between them tends to actually come from their automatic leveling system. They both have them standard, but all Cougars will always have a four-point auto leveling system. Now, on a high country, they have a few smaller models that use a four-point auto leveling system, but typically speaking, high country Montanas, like this one right here, will actually run on a six-point auto leveling system. The bigger models basically gaining some extra jacks for some extra stability is the idea, but that's a significant cost vector between the two of them. I like that word, vector. Like, uh, like that guy from Despicable Me, vector! Now just to again establish a quick baseline visual as we step into the high country, the floor plan could be very different. Ironically, I keep saying how we're not comparing floor plans, but the two that I chose to walk into today are the 316 Cougar and the 330 Montana High Country, which are very, very similar in layout. Something I forgot to mention in the Cougar in that model, if you actually uh, rewind the footage a little bit, look at the freestanding table, you'll see that Cougar has a dinette I actually prefer. It is a, what I call no knee knocker. There is, it's basically, it's bolted to the wall and reinforced. There's no like pedestal, no legs, nothing like that. And as a long-legged person who has struggled with having constantly bruised shins from smashing into stuff because I'm a freaking klutz, well, I really appreciate that. But remember how I said, each brand is kind of slightly finely tuned for a little bit different age group. I, I'm not a, I don't dislike the table here in a, on the high country, certainly. Um, now, one other thing I mentioned was the floor construction. Uh, a Cougar has a constructed floor, not a laminated floor. That means that there's aluminum studs. It's packed with uh, residential like batten insulation, and it has that 5 8 uh, uh, decking on top of it. A Montana high country will actually jump to a laminated floor, nice, thick, and heavy duty, before they jump up to a full Monty Montana, uh, which has a constructed floor more similar to the Cougars. Thing is, though, we don't have keystone floor problems in, in any of our fifth wheels. So I kind of uh, call that a little bit of an equivalent wash. Montana does it up here to help save some weight in the construction. That's that's a goal because within the Montana family, this high country is the lighter, more towable brother. But when you're talking big cougar versus uh, high country, it's, it's, it's very similar there. So what differences are we going to get when we look through them? And it's a bunch of little things. Like we talked about that drop frame storage thing. That's a big deal item. A smaller deal item will be things like the uh, the fact that you've got power theater reclining. You've got typically, varies by floor plan, but typically bigger hide-a-bed sofas. 
Now, that does mean you have smaller side stands. I think most people prefer a bigger sofa over a smaller stand, but I don't know. It's kind of six to one, half a dozen to the other. When we jump up into a high country, we're going to get this very cool 12-volt ceiling fan right here. So if you do happen to be camping off grid and on battery power or solar or generator or whatever, you know, at the end of the day off batteries, um, you can keep some air moving in here. Now, one of the uh, significant differences here, though, is that in the living room of a high country, you will have a whisper ducted 15,000 BTU calm and quiet air. So in the living room of this, where you spend most of your time, it is double quiet. Something else you don't see is the uh, 16,500 BTU heat pump on the main AC of all Montanas. They both have the same 5120 BTU electric space heating fireplace. The physical dimensions of that object right there has no bearing on its heat output, by the way. You'll also see a couple little differences in the uh, kitchen area of a high country, which once again, I think really speak to the variance it has in, in terms of its target buyer. What I mean by this is uh, in a Cougar, both basins of that stainless sink were about this size. But in a high country, you start to also get like a bigger almost farm sink plus the normal sink. And they do that because although both RVs carry the same uh, warranty for full-time RVing, a high country tends to generally appeal a little bit more to the actual full-time RVer. That's also going to be why, well, and what I mean by that is full-time RVers tend to start doing things like having bigger pots and pans with a higher frequency. Not that you can't in a Cougar, just that it's more common here. Also, on a similar note, you'll see that down here we have a central vacuum system not present at all on the Cougar. Uh, and, and again, that speaks, I think, a little bit to the, we're starting to encroach on the realm of some more residential full-time RVing sort of features and feelings in the high country. And you'll see that trend continue as we move forward. And again, another area where I think you see that where each is targeting a slightly different age demographic, and there are some stereotypes that go along with this. It doesn't always apply. But the fact that in a high country, we just have switches. We don't have digital. We don't have Bluetooth. You don't need to dig your phone out of your pocket or the, the uh, tablet or whatever. You can just walk up and go, no, I don't want the light on. And that's the end of it. You don't have to go beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 boop. Which, uh, by the way, if you speak R2-D2 language, you know I just said something very unsavory about his mother. And again, these two bathrooms, very similar, and I'm not trying to specifically compare floor plans, but these two models do give us a good comparison of the mentality between the two brands. You notice how much more room there is on either side of the toilet in this high country on a roughly similar floor plan. High countries are willing to be a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, a little heavier. Cougars, for instance, are a really good mix of bunkhouses and couples models, whereas high countries lean more toward couples models while still having a really hand-picked selection of some good, uh, you know, bunk layouts. Now, you're also noticing where Cougar had a split shower enclosure in a high country, we start to pick up that nice one-piece fiberglass self-reinforced molded fixture. It's a little bit heavier duty, basically. It does weigh a little more. It does cost a little more. Those are going to be some of the variances. You'll also see a few more little touches when you go to a high country, like magnet holdbacks on these doors, so that if you don't want to have to constantly have the door swinging open or closed, it'll just you just kind of flip it that direction, and it's going to catch. Additionally, in the Cougar, you had one of these fans in the kitchen, but in your Montanas, you're also going to pick up another one of these XL range censoring fans here in the bathroom. Now, if... The only thing stopping you from getting into a Cougar is just a bigger bath fan? Do not worry about that. That is what I call screwdriver work. We got an awesome parts and service team here at Halet RV. We can take care of little things like that for you. So if you don't want to spend the extra five to seven grand to step up from a Cougar to a high country, you just want a couple little upgrades, for a couple hundred bucks you could get yourself there and laugh the rest of the way all the way to the bank. And again, remember their bedrooms are going to be very, very similar. But here's one of the key differences between them. In really kind of blurry point of technicality, a Cougar is what is called a mid-profile fifth wheel, whereas a High Country is a true high profile. And where you see that is they both are tall in the upper deck. But in the Cougar, remember how it dipped down right here? But in the High Country, it does not. That allows a High Country to, generally speaking, 
have bigger bed slides. They are sometimes deeper. Again, queen versus king beds will be uh, the same between the two, but that Taller profile brings with it a couple significant benefits. It does mean that we have a taller closet up front, and where that is a really big deal is what happens over here between, uh, between? Hmm, is that even a word? It sounds like some old timey Shakespearean English. Between and hence, anyway, behind <laughs> door number two. <laughs> Nailed it. And that is what's going on with the washer dryer situation. If we go back to the Cougar, most full cougars are combo washer dryer ready a very small number of full cougar floor plans have no washer dryer prep a very small number of them have side by side washer dryer prep whereas by default a high country is typically like this a high country montana usually has stackable washer dryer prep with only a very small number of floor plans being combo washer dryer only so a high country always has some kind of washer dryer prep a cougar usually does it just varies a little bit like that which again speaks to who's going to be using them i know i say it a thousand times but that's the mentality between these two same but different offerings the other thing that is a major shift between the two like major shift brother is what's happening right here above my balding hairline that is the second air conditioner situation a cougar standard has one 15,000 btu quiet coleman air conditioner it has the option, it's standard 50 amp, it has the option of applying a second 13,500 BTU quiet air conditioner. They're not whisper ducted, they're quieter running air units. There actually is a difference between that. Some RV manufacturers really like to not tell you the difference of that. We carry all kinds of different things here at Halet, so we can always shoot you straight. Now, if we jump over to the high country, remember the main air conditioner was whisper ducted, quiet cooling, and had a heat pump. One, two, three, big features right there, man. The second air conditioner is standard on a high country. It is also 15,000 BTUs. So those, I think, are some major, major shift points between the two members of this family. Now there's a few other kind of significant differences between them, but they, uh, they actually come from the realm of the options available to both brands. If you're looking for a generator, Cougar does not have a factory gen prep, factory generator, none of that. A lot of the big Cougars do have a large enough front cavity where we might be able to install a generator in them. Uh, Halet RV, being so close to the manufacturing heart of this industry, one of the benefits we have is that we can literally just ship one of these things over to Onan, the people who supply most of the generators in the RV industry anyway, and get an Onan factory install on the generator, which, sweet, it has its own Onan warranty and stuff at that point. But you don't tend to find that uh, usually on a Cougar. Whereas a high country, you can get generator prep. You don't tend to find that most of the time either though. That's typically something where if you custom order it, you'll get it. Another difference is what happens when we get the sun involved. And that is what is different between the potential solar packages. Both Cougar and Montana high country have factory offered solar packages. On a Cougar, it will be a 170 watt package with a 2000 watt inverter and a couple other odds and ends, obviously an appropriately sized charge controller. It is expandable for up to three panels, which is quite a bit, but it'll come with one from the factory. On a high country, you have the option of getting the Montana Solar Flex package, which is very similar, but basically boosts up to a 300 watt solar panel. So. By default, you're able to get a little bit more solar on the uh, the high country, and you can add another panel if you want to, to go up to 600, which is more than what the Cougar is capable of expanding up to. A real quick note, a high country Montana is not capable uh, of being equipped with the super solar system, which is like the four mega panels, the 1200 watt system with the Dragonfly batteries, the 3000 watt inverter, that is only full big Monty Montana. So what do you think, everybody? Which one speaks a little clearer to you? Are you Team Cougar? You Team Montana? Either way, you're Team Awesome Sauce. <laughs> I don't believe, like I said, you would be unhappy with either of these two offerings. And do, please, again, leave me some comments. Let me know what you like. Uh, let me know maybe what you'd like to see different, or if I haven't left something clear, if you have any questions, let me know that too, and I'll do my best to help clear that up to, you know, again, help you find your second camper the first time. And of course, when you're ready to make that camp and dream a reality, you give our team inside here at Halet RV a call, 
we'd love to assist you. We're family owned and operated. We've been here since 1989. We're one of the largest dealers out there, but we're just a standalone mom and pop shop. We're just a really big, really successful one. I think people like that fact that we just don't do all those hidden dealer fees. We educate you. We're just easy to deal with, you know? Works for me, works for you. Give us a call, let's get you camping. So as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Appreciate it very much.